Stones out now. Orin Jun is just in no man's land. Overheats, tries to get Mickey, but will not the sky. It's falling again, though, in the meantime. I'm lagging, lagging. Sam? I don't know, Sam. I don't know, Sam. Yes, Flash. I'm getting out now. Nice. 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 Yeah, I'm on HP, I'm on HP. And welcome back to the LEC as G2 opens up the score here against Fnatic. We wanted some exciting games. We got one. One-sided though, on in favor of G2, but exciting drafts for now, at least. Two interesting picks we can talk about. Rumble on one side, didn't work so well. Already on Sol, in the hands of Caps though, what did we think of the champion? I was a little bit skeptical at yeah. first because, it, I mean, he did start the game getting solo killed <laughs> by Humanoid pretty early. It looked like he, he didn't know his limits, but apparently he got the in out of his system and then just fully unleashed. I think what was impressive about it is that, you know, Aurelion has always been this kind of champion that can roam around the map and make plays, and that's exactly what Caps did. Like, first, he just dropped the mid wave, or roamed down and find, found an opportunity. Later, he pushes in mid, immediately roams top, and, you know, these are only two examples, but that's what he did the entire game. He was everywhere. Yeah, I think after that early laning, yes, a couple of hiccups there and there. Uh, I think the fact that he was able to get out onto the map so freely to enable these, you know, in theory, or not even in theory, on paper, very, very strong uh, side lane picks between the Renekton and the Lucian Nami, making sure that he's always there and, you know, Humanoid wanting to be a little bit more stacked, trying to build his own lead inside the lane. It just felt like Fnatic never really had the numbers and this was that big major fight, right? The yeah. huge wombo. There's not really much that Fnatic can do when you get double bubble, double wave, and then double ultimate uh, by the Asol. It's too much TC, too much burst. And that's the kind of thing that, you know, Asol eventually comes and brings into these mid-game team fights. I mean, that's the thing. We Slower mid-game, honestly, not quite what I was expecting on the side of G2, but they just had to wait here. And we saw here on this fight initiation from Fnatic Broxa, but in the end, G2 gets the best of it because they have the tools to do so and also the perfect ex uh, execution to do it as well. Most of the fights felt kind of similar, where yeah. Fnatic knows that they have to deal with Caps in order to, you know, actually come out on top. So often, Broken Blade was just left on the side, just, you know, soaking up damage and kind of waiting for Caps to eventually drop low or die, and then he could just kill everybody who, who was low as a result of Caps' immense damage. Mm -hmm. And I think in that sense, the comp just complemented each other so nicely, because you have so many early game tools, but then it doesn't really matter going almost all in an early game because Aurelion Soul scales better than any other champion in the game. Yeah, and that's why I like the theory of this draft so much from G2 because it is basically, all right, if all else fails, Caps will be able to wave clear, Caps will be able to eventually scale. And, you know, even if they weren't having such strong side lane states, Caps probably would have done something similar, even if it's not like necessarily game winning, it's going to be one of those things where Fnatic have to fight tooth and nail to get through uh, a champion like Asol. And yeah, I can only really continue to commend uh, Caps for bringing it out and making look it look this. so damn good, because look at the stats! Look at this! He's making the champion look easy. We replaced a cute dragon with a space dragon here, and I feel like he feels completely what G2 wants to do in-game, in the sense that you, I agree on what you said. Caps is often the late-game insurance, the carry insurance for G2, Having some slack maybe in the early game, but you know that he's going to be able to show up in the later stages of the game. Do you want to give the Space Dragon to Caps again? The champion seems tailored for him, and it fits in the meta as well. Well, I can imagine if you're a fanatic, this is a situation you want to avoid, because I also think this draft approach from G2 made so much sense generally. Early game has been one of their clear weaknesses. Now, drafting in this sort of way secured them monster strong top mm -hmm. jungle and bot with caps being the late game insurance being the scaling and everything just complemented each other so nicely and it was almost a band-aid to their normally rather poor early game where you know we said that going into the series we need fan and fanatic to smash them early to have a chance if g2 continues to draft this way it ain't happening mm -hmm. yeah and you know what that's why i kind of liked what fanatic were going for through this rumble and ash on the bottom side of the map right they kind of identify that okay there's been a bit of volatility between hands and between uh mickey x so let's try and pick something that in theory should be a very strong lane you, uh, you kind of have a lot of outrange and then it's all about the all-in basically flashing in as rumble uh with the overheat and trying to just one shot the opponent it didn't quite get to work out right and fanatic did try to on occasion force some skirmishes but again it was the numbers advantage from caps being able to have first move after the first or like seven eight minutes or just sacking waves which really made it difficult for that uh, bottom lane of Fnatic to really try and do its thing. I also think it's interesting that Fnatic decided to go red side going into the next game. Traditionally a team would always choose blue because then you kind of you know choose the flow of the draft so to speak 
but in this case it kind of tells me that you know Fnatic don't want to show their hands they mm -hmm. don't want to give up anything they don't want to give g2 counter they would rather have g2 pick whatever they would like and then try to adapt and respond so you can avoid situations like this one that's the thing how do you adapt then who do you want to empower the most well in this particular game we saw bands coming out of Fnatic uh, for Draven, Callista and Nautilus they were targeting bot lane pretty heavily now we saw from d2 that the bands didn't really matter and at the end of the day in this particular game the caps and broken blade were the main characters and i think that's what makes d2 a really scary team that you can't really ban out anybody like if you target one role somebody else is just gonna step it up instead yeah i do feel like banning champions is not gonna be enough here we're gonna head to the second draft though in a few minutes here uh, and see which direction fnatic wants to take here we've been we've been critical of g2's approach method and maybe discipline in game what do you do against a G2 that's fully disciplined here? I mean, I think for me, the shining sort of point for Fnatic in this game one was Humanoid, right? So I would really love to see somehow in draft if Fnatic are able to try and enable him a little bit more in a more, you know, proactive yeah. lane, shall we say, right? I think giving him the Orianna is always going to be fine. You know what you're getting out of the Orianna, but again, it's somewhat in that matchup, which probably maybe you were expecting, maybe you weren't. He's been playing it a lot in solo queue, as Derek was saying. Uh, you know, you're locked into lane, you don't really get to help out until basically the laning phase is done. I feel like Fnatic, again, not being able to enable Razork through the mid lane to then play through bot was the major deciding factor in some of those early game skirmishes. I think G2 is actually making pretty good adaptations here, knowing that that blue side, like before they were banning Vi, Rex and Rel, now, you know, they know Fnatic is always going to be responding, so they get rid of annoying counter picks like Rumble or Twisted Fate. I mean, keep in mind, Rumble, you can even pick early and then Fnatic can keep it till the end flexed mm -hmm. to a top support, whatever. Uh, so they get rid of those picks, insta lock the Volibear, that's the strongest jungler, and Volibear alone is just going to help enable them early game. Now, we did see the Jax uh, being picked the other day by BDS versus Volibear. Shio in that game was able to just match Volibear and, you know, kind of and negate everything he wanted to do throughout the game. That combined with the Siri could help them survive early game and then they have late game insurance. Yeah. Could help them, but we know how coin flip the Jack's pick can be. He exactly. needs to find success here. And I suppose in some ways it's also obviously a flex, right? And now that G2 have revealed the Rek'Sai, this is also the other thing. Rek'Sai and Volibear are interchangeable, so they can kind of just True. go whatever matchup they want. I wonder if Fnatic in their own right ha actually have something that they can go towards in the top jungle at the same time. Uh, something maybe like Gragas, but then you're maybe looking at an AD mid and we haven't necessarily seen Humanoid uh, lean on that too much this split no of course it's gonna no. be the classic azir corgi no we all missed it nah. we? <laughs> when all else fails i guess corgi is it back but to basics guys this I mean, this yeah. for me now brox i don't know how you feel but it's just a, a whole bunch of scaling on the fanatic side right it's even more passiveness and i wonder if you two are just going to take this opportunity to try and slam a very very proactive bottom lane and just run the game over in like 25 minutes uh, and basically stop Fnatic from playing any kind of proactive game anywhere on the map. Yeah, I think if you're a Fnatic, you have to consider getting rid of something like uh, the Lucian Nami uh, at this point. Because the thing is, both comps have really good scaling, but on G2, you do have a lot of proactivity coming out of the Seer. He's going to push in Corky early, which could lead to Caps just roaming to side lanes like we saw in the last game. Rek'Sai also in the past was considered an early game champion, but now with the tank build top, he's also going to have pressure and be a bit of a monster in the later stages. So Fnatic, they have scaling. Now they need a way to survive early game and they need somebody who can engage in start fights. Yeah, exactly. They need some form of reliable engage, I think, is the main thing. Uh, I suppose in some ways G2 are kind of lacking that as well. So I wonder if that's going to kind of prompt more of a bit of a more neutral ban from G2, not necessarily the Nautilus, because that's probably the thing that's on both these teams' mind. Fnatic would love a Nautilus right now just to be able to have the setup. But also G2 would love another point and click CC to actually shut down the Zeri in the uh, mid to late game. So let's see what G2 decide to do, because that's got to be the pick that's on their mind. Whether or not they want to give it over to Fnatic and then maybe look for a positive support matchup as is more or less the trade I think that G2 will be looking towards. They lock down the Blitzcrank, right. so. I think G2's logic here is that while Fnatic would benefit a lot from having a Nautilus. Nautilus, Braum is open and Braum yeah. traditionally counters Nautilus. He's going to be great in the Siri and Corky as well. Uh, I think the Olaf adaptation oh. from Fnatic is pretty smart because, you know, just hold on to your support pick a little bit longer, prevent the Nautilus uh, getting countered by Braum, leave your options open. If they go Nautilus or Braum now on G2's side, Olaf is just going to smash them in teamfights. 
Yeah. Matching the late game sure. here on this side of G2, I guess. Yeah, with this and oh, Thresh. Okay. Cool. I love it. I so love aggression. it. Yeah. Early game playmaking. And Mickey's Thresh, I miss this. Yeah, I can't remember the last time I saw Mickey's Thresh. <laughs> I feel like it's been a while. And now Thresh Jim. in general. Like yeah, we, Thresh it's in general. coming back. It's I, coming back. I hope we see it more is uh, the main thing. So much playmaking, so much utility through the, the land, and one of the best design champs in the game. That aside, Fnatic, they do lock down the Nautilus, so they've got a bit of uh, hard committal engage if they want it, and the setup will be there if they can actually find uh, both Hans and Caps at some point. But to me, I feel like, again, even though they've got that Nautilus, my idea of Nautilus in this game is probably he's running towards the top side and he's trying to enable uh, this Olaf and the Jax. Or maybe it's going to be the, the three-man show on the bottom side. I feel like there are options for Fnatic, but again, yeah. they're waiting for a long time for both the Zeri and the Corky to come online. I think that's really the, the challenge for them at this point. The draft, in a lot of ways, is similar to the one in the last game, where the question becomes, can Fnatic survive the early game? Sure, you know, G2 locked in champions like Asir and Jinx, who are pretty scaling oriented but they will have push both mid and bot in the early game and that puts a lot of pressure on oscar this boy is going to have to perform on the all up top is going to be really volatile and i imagine both junglers are going to want to get involved up there but if top goes south for fnatic it's going to be hard to come back i like the adaptation though on the side of fnatic and in winter we got to see three games between these two teams let's see if it can happen again casters over to you ladies and gentlemen this one is heating up. Thank you to the desk. It's so hot, in fact, that Vettius, are you okay? Bit of hot tea on your hands. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> You're right. Vettius is going to recover for the start of this one. It was that spicy of a game that Vettius decided a bit of hot tea to get into this one. Not for the throat, but for the finger. He's now going to be recovered. I'm going to look after him, ladies and gentlemen. Don't worry. If he doesn't make it through the cast, I can give him a bit of time because G2 Fnatic will also like it as well, heat up. The crowd is supporting Fnatic. I think G2 did the talking in game one. Now Fnatic fans need to do the same. Broken Blades, Rek'Sai. Seeing that again, Oscar in it on something that has a bit more carry potential that can fall flat as well. We have to see how it does in the lane. How are you doing, you all right? How are you? Good. My hand is warm. <laughs> yeah, it just, there is a tissue around it right now. I don't think that's just warm, but I think that might be a bit burnt. So we'll be fine. Uh, let's have a look at this early game. Always got to keep track of early jungle pathing. True. Uh, there's a lot of scaling this time round. I look at what Fnatic have drafted, and you've got a lot of range. Things like Corky, Zeri. I don't expect as much action to happen in the early game. You can never really be too sure when it comes to these two teams. Fnatic looking to get a bit of information in the early game. Vision dropped around Raptor Camp already. See where Yike is starting. And uh, I definitely think that we've seen a number of answers into the Rek'Sai. I quite like Olaf, the idea being that, well, things that have sustain are always pretty good into the Rek'Sai. Yep. But uh, crucially, the fact that you can uh, Avoid getting knocked up once you get that ultimate is incredibly valuable. So we'll see how things pan out on that top side. I do expect this all have to be able to have a little bit more priority in the early laning phase. Already a couple trades towards the bot side of the map. Some good ones at that as well from Mickey X on something that, again, they're talking about on desk is coming back in a way as well. It's nice to see Thresh a lot more playmaking into the meta as well. But remember as well, the good thing in the interaction about Nautilus, I think a lot of analysts have said over the years, is the danger is Thresh throws out the hook. He stands still, giving a free Nautilus hook in the same vein as well. So, with the risk, sometimes it goes against the reward. Good trades from Broke Blade in the top side in the meanwhile. At least in early levels. I mean, this is the annoying thing. Have you noticed with the Rek'Sai side top? It is frustrating Yep. as the game goes on because the healing is just so much. Yeah, it's so much in the early game, especially because... Uh, Oscar, he's not going to have the amount of sustain that he needs, but he does have a lot of trading power thanks to his Q. Yike, though, making a beeline towards top lane. How quick can he get in? Flash is available. Oscar has gone for the big trade here. The damage onto Broken Blade. Oscar flashes immediately, but Broken Blade matches that, and here's Yike. A stun up, and there's no unstoppable yet. First blood over to Yike, and G2 again. The early game is in. Nice adaptation on the pathing there from Yike. The comms come through from Broken Blade. Hey. I think that we can get a nice kill onto Oscar. And he sets it up nicely. Flash for the knockup. The follow up from Yike. Easy kill. Jun making his way towards mid. 
Mickey stops the back because he knows now that he's here, Jun can make a play of his own, but Dredge Line already used, so Mickey just hovers over the wall into Focke Core in the meantime. Well, Razork now on top side, but not much he can do here. Broken Blade back in the lane. I just want to see where the minion wave's at. Yeah, in a very good spot for Broken Blade here. It's just slowly crashing into him, and Razork can't do anything but watch. Razork gonna secure that top crab. They should have information that the bog crap is also up. Bot wave being pushed in by Noah. Broken Blade still looking for a few trades. This wave is in a pretty good spot though. Still has the TP available, which is such a nice position for him to be in. Are they really going to try and dive this? I think Rek'Sai is a very difficult champion to dive. Perhaps the priority here for Razork is just to make sure that his top laner feels covered. But if he keeps fighting like oh, this... Actually, the help bar could enable something, hey? Knock-ups there, Razzle comes in, Broken Blade, remember, no flash, and Razzle doesn't get the stun, Broken Blade gets out of range, and I've seen this tunnel story before. Ganking Broken Blade, a full errand. I'm, I'm pretty concerned. Broken Blade able to get away. What was a pretty dangerous situation. Very clutch play, Fnatic, but ultimately a lot of time wasted now. They have their eyes on the bot side of the map. We see Broken Blade going for a trade against Oscar once oh, he again. Does, he does damage. It's getting risky here, though. I mean, Oscar in and starting to do damage himself. For BB, as he walks forward, I mean, that top lane is where our eyes are, but we haven't talked about G2's bot. Razork now comes in, but over Yike, I mean, everyone's here from G2. Razork going in early. His E is not going to get the stun up. Yike comes back in. He's going to get the kill. Noah and Jun can't add too much here as Han Summer gets excited, and now we step away again. G2, it ain't just the top side of the map, but now the bottom side of the map is set up for success. Hysterics, I wasn't expecting aggression in the early game. I was expecting a slow, more passive, far more oriented approach. That's what the comp says, doesn't it? But Yike is not interested. He's looking for a fight, and he makes one happen. Razork, by so much time, thanks to his Counter-Strike. But then, once it dissipates, Yike goes for the all-in, and he's able to find a kill. 2-0 now on the Volley Bear is exactly where you want to be. A champion that has so much power in the early levels is doing work for G2. I will say, after that gank, after Han Sama helped out with the kill, they did base, and so a couple of minions will be lost, but it is a cannon wave bot side. So Noah isn't able to capitalize too much on that. But instead, as the wave crashes through, we'll just have to see how it equalizes in the CS score. Because of it, though, Yike, with the reset coming through from Fnatic's bottom lane, will now start off the Dragon. Looks like he'll take it as well, because you look at the minimap, ladies and gentlemen. Razork is mid. Nothing to speak of there is. Level 6 versus level 5, Broken Blade has the danger button to go onto Oscar Rin, and he's not 6 yet. This could be a solo kill with level advantage, but Undertow follows through. Prey Seeker misses, though. There's no void rush to speak of. Oscar and walks back near the wave. How close is he to six? How close is he to six? How close? It ain't there just yet. And the next one now, Broken Blade. Feels like he loses a lot of his chance. Feels like that solo kill potential, although it's still risky there for Oscar in and Undertow follows through, slowed down again. Prey Seeker back and forth. Tunnel now use Oscar in and goes over it. Picks up the Undertow again. I love how observers are just stuck up here, but now that he's level six, Broken Blade, your time has come. Goes into the Void Rush, but as he comes out, Oscar in and he fired his time so well there. And now for Yike as he flashes over the wall, Oscar in and Really patient play, deserves the crowd chance. Yeah, he finally gets something back in a much needed moment of reprieve. We turn our attention back to top though. It's Already Broken Blade is here. He TP back in, Counter-Strike onto Yike, but Broken Blade tunnels in, Oscar in and no doesn't ults. have that man, Rampage to go through. And with the damage that comes through, it's still a shutdown. But Broken Blade to get through, looking for the trade. On the Razork, no tunnel to speak of. Razork gets a big shutdown there too. And Yike thought he had it. And just like that, the gold is equalized in these extended skirmishes. Those auto attackers just have so much advantage. Yeah. Olaf plus the Jacks really making it work. Fnatic bounce back, equalize the kills, equalize the gold, and we find ourselves in a similar state of affairs to what we saw in game one, Hysterics, where it was back and forth until G2 found a single fight that blew the whole game open. Oscar still has a slight gold lead in the top lane for now. Getting a plate back will definitely help Broken Blade in that regard. Oh, wow, well played to Razork. Being in the right place, right time this time round. Able to get the better of Yike yep. in the small skirmish. That's what we needed to see, right? With the Olaf top, we know if it doesn't find itself in the early game, it doesn't find some kind of momentum. 
your usefulness starts falling off, where we know that Broken Blades Rek'Sai, we know that this tank top can be a nuisance all game long. So it is nice to see that Oscar Inan gets his revenge as Broken Blade just goes in the enemy jungle. Razork does have Smite though, so there's not much he can do apart from gaining vision of where Razork is. But look at this from the bot lane of G2. Putting pressure down Ooh. onto the blue buff. The hook Close not going to connect from Mickey. Look at him. How annoying is this pool party wreck side? So annoying. There is a wave that he needs to go and catch in the top lane, though. So True. he's going to be forced to abandon all of this obnoxious pressure that he's been putting down. Oscar, now with some life steal, is going to make this matchup much more tolerable. Yeah. Having the sustain as well from his W is going to help. It's just that knock-up that's annoying for a lot of matchups, but of course, once you get the level 6, as we saw earlier, allows you to just chase the Rek'Sai down. But uh, Oscar looking maybe for a window to roam Next down. Flash. Mickey looking for a dredge line. Gets it. Jun misses the dredge line himself. Excuse me. It's a depth that's now found as Rocket comes through. Razork absorbs the damage, but they turn for Jun. Yike trying to find his own kill as Mickey gets charged on by Noah, but he's sitting in front of Han Sama, who gets excited now onto Humanoid, cleans up the rest. As soon as that one evaporates, Jinx gets more than just excited. She blows up a fight. This was, un it's so similar to what we saw in game one. Dead even, constant scrapping, but then G2 just finds a huge fight on the bot side of the map. We look back and I have to question Noah's game plan here. A hook connects on the Jun. He gets chunked out right from the start of the fight. Good damage from Yike. They try to lock down Caps. He flashes away. Razork chains CC with a good ultimate response from Yike. Dives onto the backline. But look at Noah here. He puts himself on the front line of Hans. His priority is trying to kill Mickey. He keeps missing the Qs. He does finally get the kill, but Hans Summer turns it around. He gets the reset, gets himself a double. And now this Jinx has an 800 gold lead. And I talked up Han Summer in the fight, but really it was Yike, wasn't it? Yike again, just picking off the pieces. His gold the highest in the game right now for a certain reason. And this early game Volley Bear, I mean, a lot of the time we talk about it falling off or not being as relevant, but I think this is a game where Yike is going to show us how much you can evaporate the early game in your favor. 2k gold lead by G2 in that regard as well. They got the first dragon. Next one's up in 30 seconds. I'm just looking across the board. I see first item in the Sundered Sky for Yike. We've also got, I was going to say Wits End, that is not correct. Nash has picked up by Nash Caps. Hunt Summer with the boost Lightning Bolt as well. That's also there. So with the Static Shiv, a lot of damage now for this next Dragon for G2 to contest. The good news for Fnatic is that their comp still scales very well, even though they find themselves at a deficit. I mean, against Volibear, you expect to struggle in the early skirmishes. Uh, I will say, probably not to this extent. This is not the ideal situation Fnatic want to find themselves in. It comes down to how well G2 can accelerate this game. If you are a G2 fan, though, you have to be ecstatic about seeing them find these leads in the early game. True, that's what oh. we said. Probably the biggest point of criticism that they've had this year. Yep. And we heard Broxer talking about it on the desk where he said they're going for more of these drafts where they just have more tools in the early game to be able to fight and skirmish and then always having that scaling insurance. And this game, it is Caps, it is Han Summer to be their late game insurance. While Yike is just unlocked on the map, doing as much as possible, been involved in five of the team's six kills. Four kills for himself. The Sundered Sky is going to make him very strong. And while I do think Jax can be a good pick into the Volley Bear, at this point, the Volley Bear just does a lot of damage that you're probably going to want to avoid him for a little while. I mean, agreed. Especially since, you know, for Yike, he's going to destroy people like Noah. No cleanse available. His flash is there. But for Yike, now thinking about a pivot onto Razork. Humanoid moving in, but no package there. Something we haven't mentioned yet is what's going on topside. The bros brawling once again as uh, Void Rush was used by Broken Blade. <laughs> we just talked about, you know, getting the Bam Scepter, maybe the matchup turning around. Oscar in and still doesn't feel like he's in control here. I mean, Broken Blade's using the tunnels very well. He is. Every time that ultimate is popped, he's creating a gap between him flash. and Oscar. He's looking for a kill. He's got Flash. Flash knockup. Ulti's oh, down. that's too much health back, I think. I think Dragon. it's too dangerous. Okay. Ro oh, it was the Rocky. He was trying to bait him into it. Uh, <laughs> and then he gets the kill. Yeah. yeah. Oscar, That's though, Fancy Pete, dodges away from that one. Next Dragon in three and a half minutes, so that's going to be a ways away, but the Grubs are up. Oh, I say Grub is up. Yike, going to ignore it, though. Going to walk over a ward. Yeah, Oscar, he, he needs to leave. And Yike has said, 
I'm hit it's to evict you well. from the residence. No way he survives. Wait, yes he does. Okay, that one fan, very much an Oscar-ridden fan, as Yike is now caught in the middle of three people. Okay, scream louder, the shutdown for Humanoid. <laughs> I guess you should be if Fnatic are getting something back in this game. Broken Blade thinks that he is sitting in fog, but look at Jun making the pass around. Hello there. Broken Blade, the tunnel system is there. Jun trying to interrupt, Dredgeline pulls him back again. He's the tank, so he's trying to buy time, heal up, but he can't go underground. And Broken Blade drops down. Humanoid with two quick kills on the Corky. Suddenly, Fnatic, their mid laner is alive. G2 are cross-mapping plates elsewhere on the map, but ultimately an overcommitment from G2. Yeah. Yike committed his flash to getting the kill on Oscar when I think they should have just been content with zoning him away. Creating for that kill meant the Humanoid could TP in and punish. Boy. Ooh, nice dash away from the hook. Meanwhile, Broken Blade didn't realize that he was just sitting on a ward, so he also gets collapsed on. Fnatic get two kills back, definitely valuable for them, and crucially, they go on to Humanoid. Yeah. But Fnatic lose mid tower. The bot lane has also suffered heavy damages. And 1.5k is the gold advantage for Han Summer. A player that we haven't talked a lot about, but he's someone I've been thinking more. When you when you go into the draft against G2, what's banned every game? Draven Callista. Yeah. Every game, he always draws bans. And one of the criticisms thrown to one Han Summer is his pool, not that big, right? He can only play hyper aggressive ADs, and if he's not on something that. Uh, is winning the lane that he's not offering that much value, but he's having a great series so far. That's been well. It's gonna be used again. The Ragnarok to run. Caps now in damage range though. Storm Ring and turns off the turret. Oscar and runs out of the ulti and Yike runs his life down. Top turret in the meantime. That's a kill, but remember, it's actually not the first turret, Lace Jumper. That's the second one. Sorry, third of the game. <laughs> but it will be more pressure bot. I'm just wondering if this inner turret's gonna go down bot side. It's Mickey hovering around. Yike's still here as well. Another death sentence close to Noah's life, but as his throat is clear for the meantime, next wave crashing in and G2 consistently hover around and try and push Let's in Let's just look wave. at the minimap right now and all these points of pressure that they're creating. They heavy index towards the bot side of the map, putting all this vision down, clearing out what Fnatic can see while keeping a lot of wards and hitting onto this bot tower. That then gives freedom for Han Summer to go and catch this wave, push it all the way in mid, and basically just create all these points with which Fnatic have to deal with. And they can't deal with all of them at once. Okay. Because in the meantime, top lane, oh, there's Broken Blade. And we come back to this whole idea of the mid game of G2, the area that they've spent this entire year improving and trying to focus on. And it's examples like this that make them a cut above many of the other teams in Europe. When they get a lead, they just don't relent. They force you to respond to everything. And if you do, they're always getting something back elsewhere on the map. So Fnatic are kind of being run around right now. That goal gap continues to grow. G2 looking for a collapse on a humanoid. He's got flash available. Where's that Valkyrie coming from? Death sentence to get into range with the flash match. Broken Blade's underneath. Double play though. Zeriel to use Broken Blade in the back line. Goes deep. It's a one for one. Yike picks up the kill again, but now I'm worried about the bot side. Tower as Fnatic took a meaty trade for that as well. The idea being that Dragon spawns in 10 seconds time. There you go. Let's use TP to force them out before Fnatic can set up for the objective. And now even oh. Razok has gone back to base. G2 keep up the pressure. But Mickey took this fight, but now getting excited, it makes it worthwhile. Ooh. Trade Caps missing the ulti there. Noah gets over the wall. Nice play from Noah. Sidesteps the engage from Caps. Another member falls though. Yike pulls off the Dragon. Three members are alive for Fnatic, and they're keen to still try and fight this Broken Blade. Obviously used his TP in the last exchange. Gonna start making their way back out. I don't think this brawl is over yet. But Noah has no ulties at half HP coming in. Hunt, I'm using Ranger's TP. Flies through, there's the Quick Strikers. Onto Yike, he's gonna find the stun. Razork starting a stop and immune in the backside, but uh, Captain Hans Summer ordering for their life. Humanoid uses the package, but doesn't get the kill. The flash away, Hans not gonna burn today. Yike died in the meantime, but Caps flies through the skies. Faster than a dog on a weird carriage. As Noah, oh, the no, Broken Blade steals it. A shut down, and now more to come. Razork low, Hans Summer between them as well. His zap zones out, he doesn't wanna get near the fight, but don't worry about it. He's says counter-strike there but broken blade follows through you get into these team fights and g2 still managed to find a way an incredibly long back and forth between the two teams ultimately it is g2 that walk away with more kills but the dragon remains standing yike is going to come back out onto the map razork in about 15 seconds broken blade will secure a tower 
And G2 looking to control this game. 4K now, the gold lead. I think we're going to learn not to give Broken Blade the Rek'Sai. <laughs> it is a nuisance. It's a pain. It is controlling, you know. I know we've used this word a lot today, but literally that's what it does. It controls space, doesn't it, as we watch this replay again. We go back to the beginning of the exchange. The commitment onto Humanoid is a bit too deep, and Broken Blade loses his life in exchange. Great stuff from Humanoid, doing as much damage as he can before he falls. The problem for Fnatic is that jungler is forced to go back. So as G2 move back into the jungle, their goal is to secure the dragon. This is where it gets a little too greedy from G2 because they overcommit trying to get this kill. They see Han Summer there, ends up being another one for one. Nice glide over the wall from Noah, creates space between him and Caps. And now it's a 3v3, so Yike is forced to pull away from the dragon. It ends up being another brawl after the fact, which G2 are able to win out on. Now the Herald is alive. The Dragon did end up going down in favor of G2, and they're looking to turn this into another objective. But very quickly, Fnatic is losing full control over this game. And so now we need to start timing things like the package, right? Herald goes down, as you mentioned. But as Baron comes up in 30 seconds, as Dragon will be coming up as a sole priority, Fnatic now looking to fight off the back end. Humanoid poking from afar. Look, who's who isolated. It's Minky. Caps can't get the damage over the wall. Good pick for Fnatic. As I was just saying, they need to start utilizing some of these tools, using Razork at least being one of them. The problem for Fnatic is that uh -oh. they're just stemming the bleeding right now. Razork has the ultimate, has flash. They got the damage for this. Broken no, he's going to get away to safety. He's fine. You kind of look at the map state, though. Bot is being pushed in by G2. Yep. They can catch another wave mid. They could even threaten a dive onto the mid-tier one. Uh, are they going to go for it? Yike has his ulti. Noah's got no summoners available. Yike ulti there. Noah runs away. Yike just zones off, threatens off. Broken Blade doing the same thing as well. Inatara goes down. This Herald's going to get a charge mid. Look at where Razork is, Vedius. Nowhere nearby. Humanoid, nowhere nearby. Fnatic is a three core. I've just been out rotated on. Noah trying to get away from Broken Blade. They're going to try and punish him, but in their own base again. They're not trading well. Comes down his Yike. The rocket is there. Getting excited. Hard Summer finds range. Noah there too as Mickey. He flashed for that play, doesn't find it, but on the meantime, they've got a juicy mid laner. I mean, G2 seems to think so as Han Summer gets the range once again. What a mistake! They leave open mid, they look for the fight after it. No summoners on Noah may have cost them as well as they all run back. And G2, it's 20 minutes, almost 21. Cap says no, not this time. Noah drops down, and that is the best team in Europe. They're already going to MSI but they want spring as well. Welcome to the upper bracket. I was not expecting the game to end like that. When I said G2 put pressure on in the mid game, this is not what I was <laughs> talking about, but a small misstep from Fnatic. They keep two members top to push out that wave and it leaves mid completely open for G2 to just run down. Using their Herald, they just break tower after tower. And, and they win the game. Crazy ending to this series. And G2 end up taking it in clean to a fashion. Oh, yeah, again, no one expected it. Both be a key player of the series, though, at LEC on X. Is it BB, Yike, or Caps? Wow. I mean, Caps had a, a quieter second game. As we said, he was scaling up. I think Yike, if we just look at game two POG, Yike had an exceptional early game. That volley bear was lethal. It's truly probably going to be Caps again. It it's probably is. I think <laughs> overall, I mean, Caps played smooth. That's the thing about Caps, reliable. I mean, Yike was explosive, though. Props to him. I think that was the best volley bear I've seen in LEC so far. I mean, it's also just one of those things where naturally, especially this split, there's been a lot of skepticism from fans around the performance of our top teams. Yep. And, like, this is a statement game from G2, right? They, they demonstrated that there is a clear gap between them and Fnatic. Fnatic will need to go back to the drawing board. They'll have to fight their way through the lower bracket for another opportunity to get a rematch against G2. But uh, G2 are looking on form in their series today. And Caps in particular has, continues to look like the best player in Europe. I was going to say, you know how they're, they're doing work on their mid game. I mean, that right there, I know you, you weren't meaning that, but that's <laughs> obviously more proof, isn't it? Like, <laughs> that was a good punish. I mean, that's what we know them to do. They, they're really good. At, you said like cross map movements, really good punishing. I think what we saw was the fact that Humanoid was top. 
Razork was nowhere to be found. They just run it down mid, they're like, okay, But ultimately, like, you, you do have to throw some criticism towards Fnatic as well. They they but, shouldn't have tried to force those skirmishes in the early game, and G2 were very quick to take punish, uh, take advantage of that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as we end out our day, and not end it out a week, because remember, we're back tomorrow, we get to toss to an interview with Hans Sama and Mickey X on stage with Jitty. Thank you so much, Vidi and XD Derricks. We appreciate it. Thank you guys as well for joining me. Congratulations on Thank your you. win. You. I thought I'd bring out the bot lane duo because we haven't heard from you guys in a little bit. And it feels like there have been changes in the bot lane. So I want to start with discussing those, maybe potentially your Thresh pick, particularly not a champion that you're unfamiliar with, but still, what was the reasoning behind it? Well, I think the Thresh was just kind of nice with Jinx because we wanted to pick Jinx there because they left it open to 4-5. And it just seemed to make sense with Volibear as well. It was just like kind of a pretty safe blind as well. So that's kind of why I picked it. And I have a good win rate on it, so I was like pretty confident. <laughs> What's the win rate? Win. I don't know, it's like 80%, so that's pretty good. Ooh. That's pretty good, okay. You guys in Bali, though, like Hansom, I want to turn this question towards you in terms of the AD carriers that are being picked, in terms of how it feels like more so we're focusing towards the top lane, the bot lane, you just want to scale later on. How have you been working on behind the scenes in terms of a increase in your own personal performances? Because obviously we've seen the spring, we've seen a couple of losses here and there, but then coming into playoffs, you guys have kind of just picked everything back up. Um, I think going towards the playoff, it's like a very different uh, meta with the uh, AD carry changes, or like uh, there's more champions that can be played on the AD carry role. Uh, there's a lot of hyper carry, like a uh, lot of Zeri, a lot of Jinx, so uh, we were, I guess, uh, focusing on that hyper carry meta a lot more uh, in the, um, like, in our team. And uh, also, I think the strong AD is being still strong, uh, strong early game. Um, that they have to ban every single game. <laughs> is this your favorite meta? Hyper carries, is that what you would like to play forever? Uh, I think hyper carry is pretty fun meta. Uh, it does so much damage, so it's definitely super fun for me. <laughs> you, uh, I see you saying, hmm, you're not, you're not an enjoyer of the hyper carries? No. You just want to like, go roam? I want to fight early. Want, okay, fair. You just but yeah, I'm go just farming. It's so boring. <laughs> <laughs> you got to help the AD carries, right, throughout that laning phase. So Don't that fight. is your job, <laughs> like a little bit of a babysitter. But in terms of in playoffs, I feel like, as we've already mentioned, you guys have had a really significant improvement. What exactly are is the final goal? Of course, we know you guys already lifted a trophy in winter. Is it still the same goal? Is it going to that international event and representing EU to the best of your possibility? Yeah, pretty much winning every game here in Europe and then going internationally and actually perform there compared to last year. Actually hopefully, perform. Hopefully win there as well. <laughs> you don't have to bring that back. It's okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll let it slide this time Thank around. You. For you, Hansama? Oh uh, yeah, definitely uh, dominating uh, the playoffs uh, run uh, spring split uh, here in EU because uh, uh, last time we didn't win it uh, last year. We won winter, but we didn't win spring, and we'd like to do a back-to-back -back, uh, title for towards the MSI. I think when we went to uh, MSI before, that was with like a big loss. Uh, not going as uh, first seed, so that felt a bit uh, not the greatest. Uh, but this time around, going there uh, with the title would be very amazing. So uh, yeah, definitely going to try our best uh, to, to really beat uh, the Asian teams. Definitely on a great track for that. I mean, you guys are looking forward to that back-to-back -back title. Potentially, you know, like, I don't want to jinx anything. But I want to talk more about your synergy as well together in the bot lane because we've seen you guys competing together for a while. How do you, first of all, get that synergy, but then also maintain it? Well, I guess getting the synergy is just about how people are on, like, just the human level, if they can talk to each other normally. I think me and Steven are pretty good at that. We talk to each other a lot. And that's also how we can keep improving on it. And yeah, we're both pretty open-minded, so it's not that hard. Uh, yeah, just uh, we're willing to uh, work with each other, like talk a lot about the game, uh, what we can optimize, uh, something about the bot lane. Uh, and yeah, I think uh, that's very important in our AD carry support uh, relationship. <laughs> Aww, that's really cute. Well, thank you guys so much for the interview. I appreciate it. We're ready to be heading over to the VGL with Laura Jamada, Roma, and Isma. So, Laura, please do take it away.